Well, this is the Maisto 3XL rock crawler, and my son had it for less than about six months before it was dead. The battery that comes with it is this little Maisto Tech 6.4 volt lithium ion rechargeable 500 milliamp hour. It's um, not something you can buy. Uh, you can see it's actually a couple HFC 1450s in there. It's not something you can buy. They don't sell it um, as a spare part. So I, I did some research trying to figure out how we could mod this car and replace the battery. I uh, came up with a better battery. This is a uh, Turnigy, um 1000 milliamp hour, so you should have double the run time. It's a 2030C discharge rate, so it's far more than the 10 that this is actually rated, and I had to do some research on that. That's a 10, this is a 20 to 30, so it can dump that power a little faster. It's a two cell, uh, same as the other one, 7.4 volts, so a little more voltage, gives you a little more kick on it. And I wanted to show you guys quick how to mod this. It's really simple, as long as you have the right tools. Um, the first thing we did, we took the old battery uh, out, and you have a wall that goes right about here, and the LED is sticking forward or sticking up for the um, power and connection light. And so that had to get out of the way to fit the bigger battery in here. I'll show you how I did that in a minute. And then you have this big old piece here that's like a 6.4 volts written here, and it's a big piece of plastic dome. There's nothing in that. That's just a placeholder to help their battery from sliding around or something. So that can come out as well. Um, this I just used a Dremel for basically, and just did a cutting wheel and cut that out and sanded it down so you don't have any rough edges in there. Ignore the wires, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but that makes it more than ample to fit this battery down in there. Um, I'm probably gonna put some kind of foam or something to buffer this so it's not bouncing around. Um, but for now, just for the sake of proof of concept, it works and the, the same cover still goes on there to give you a little protection on the battery. So, one thing to note when I was doing this was that the plug is very different. This is a plug that comes on the factory battery. Um, I couldn't find that. I think it might be a custom thing. I'm kind of new to this whole thing. So um, couldn't find that, but I did find that they have these little JST ends on the Turnigy battery. So I went on Amazon, picked up, this is the battery right here. This is, uh, let's see if I can find any labels on it. Nope, just the one. Um, so that was shipped at about 30% charge. I had to charge it when I got it. I picked up this compact charger. Uh, the E3 Turnigy Compact Charger. That worked great to charge it up. That's the box for that. And this is all on Amazon. I also bought some of these JST ends and they sell a pack of 10 male and female together. All I needed was one female because I had to plug that to the car. So I'll show you how I did that, but if you want any info on that. I wanted to make sure it was 20 gauge wire because that's what matches um, what was on the battery at least. So I wanted to make sure I had the same thickness. I didn't have any weaker wires that would build up heat or anything. So on the car, the first thing I did was take the top off. I, sh I already disassembled it here to show you guys. So you pull the, the four plastic hood pins and then this just picks up and off. Uh, it's these guys, pull those out. I just used a flat blade screwdriver to prime out. Then you have this plastic piece here that sits on top of the car like this. So I pulled the four screws out of the corners of that and picked that out. Now this circuit board originally was facing the opposite direction. This originally is facing upside down like this when you open the car up. So the first problem I saw was if we're going to put that battery in that LED lights in the way. And you can see they have this whole big plastic extension to stick it through the bottom of the car. And I thought, well, I don't want to lose the power light. So if I flip the board over, just literally turn it over, it's all, everything is centered. The screw holes are centered, the LED light centered, so it'll totally work in that direction. So let's do that. So I did that and then I drilled a hole in the top of my plastic piece there where that light comes through. And then also in the car right there. So now I have my LED light sticking up the top of the car and you'll see that when I put it back together. So we still haven't lost any functionality when it's all back together. And then the last thing I had to do was, after I dremeled that out and uh, got it ready for the new battery, was to solder on that new cable. So I went ahead and took off the original wiring here. This is what I would cut off the end for the, the plug that they had. And then desoldered this from the circuit board, the, the ground, and then this was to the power switch. And I'll show you where those are in here. So on the circuit board, 
There is your ground in the bottom corner. Right here is my new black wire running to it. Red one's in the way. Um, you can see it actually says, let me get the camera on it, G and D for ground. So that was the circuit there I had to solder to, which is really easy. It's easy to work on circuit board. There's plenty of solder there. I had to add a very little to get it to melt, but um, they didn't do a gorgeous job soldering it either. So um, then you've got all this new real estate to stick your wires through because we ground that bump off of there for the battery anyways. Power switch, if you flip the car over, you can actually take these two screws out and this whole column lifts up and it releases the uh, arms for the, the axles here. Um, and so then those tires can lay flat and this comes up and out with the power switch attached to it. You can get easy access to solder it there or if you don't want to do that, you can actually see it straight down in there but it's gonna be really hard to solder in there. So I've got my one lead running to that switch where I remove their wire. And I'm gonna put this thing back together and I'm gonna show you guys uh, the performance that we get out of this thing now that it's got the better battery. It's quite impressive. It's got a little bit of pep in its step. So, be right back. Oh, one other note on the antenna. If you look, the circuit board antenna actually was designed, it was soldered on the bottom. They originally looped it through this hole next to it and ran it pointing up. So I just pulled it back out of the hole so it's still pointing up. And then I had to drill another small hole because um, I think, let's see if we can see it here. The original was over here, and I had to drill a hole over here since we flipped that circuit board upside down so it's not on the other side. So when I put this back together, that antenna feeds through and then the LED light feeds up the middle. So I'll show you guys once I'm done putting it back on. Okay, here you see the LED sticking through there and the antenna sticking up the hole that I drilled for it. The cover goes back on. We'll line up our little hood pins here. Get our LED light through the middle. Okay, there's the LED light. There's my pins. And then you stick these guys back through. Like that. I'll get those four put in. All right, now I've got the car flipped over and I put the battery in, plugged in my JST plug there in the red. The white plug is your charging cable. Um, so that's got a little extra sensor to make sure that the cells are balanced as it's charging since it's a two cell battery. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cover back on here. And you can see it fits just fine. And if I turn it on, you should see a nice red light. So let's take it for a spin. All right, so here we have some of my kids' various crap all over the floor. So we can give this thing a test. I'd say it's got a little more pep to it than it used to. Let's try crawling. Pretty strong car with the 744 volts it really gets a lot better than it had for the 6.4 so double the runtime way more speed i think my son's gonna be happy one last thought i did have was instead of doing well, before i started the project instead of putting the battery in there and doing the dremel and all that was i could have just velcroed that battery actually fits up in here just fine um, and just ran the cable down through and just ran the cable to the circuit board inside. That's an easier way to do this if you don't have a Dremel or the ability to hollow that uh, battery compartment out. It's not as safe because the battery's not as protected um, since if you puncture that battery, you're gonna have a, a fire on your hands. Um, so I wanted to make it safe for my kid. That's why I went the route of the Dremel. But if you're an adult or you're you know older kid and you're smart enough, then that's another option.